In my previous lecture video on these problems, I explained that these two molecules here are diastereomers, and I also discussed uh, these two molecules over here, which are indeed enantiomers of each other. In case any of you are interested, I'm now going to go through it and explain what the individual configurations are of the two stereocenters in these two separate molecules and tell you what they are relative to each other, either enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same compound drawn in two different ways. In this question, we've been asked to determine the relationship between the molecules shown here to the left and the molecules shown here to the right. Are they enantiomers, diastereomers, or just the exact same molecule with the bonds twisted around in slightly different ways? Now, you should remember that single bonds have the ability, generally speaking, to rotate freely, which means that if I took this OH and rotated it around and I rotated this bond around in some way, it's possible that this molecule to the right could be rearranged in some fashion to look like the exact mirror image of the molecule to the left. Or not. I don't know. How in the world do we determine that? Well, if you have the ability to look at it really, really quickly and see, maybe you can do that and determine just looking at it if they're mirror images or not. I think I could probably do that in this case, but to be absolutely certain, there's a more thorough way, and that is to assign the S or R configuration to each stereocenter in the molecule to the left, and then do the same for the corresponding stereocenters in the molecule to the right. If they are exact opposites, in other words, if all the stereocenters on this side are the exact opposite of the corresponding stereocenters, the molecule on the right side, then they are indeed enantiomers. If they're the exact same, in other words, we have the exact same stereocenters over here, or the exact same configurations for each stereocenter over here, as we have for the same or corresponding stereocenters over here, then they're the same molecule. And if they're somewhere in between, then they are diastereomers. So let's go ahead and do this journey. We're going to look at this stereocenter right here, prioritizing each of the four groups around it. It's got a bromine, a carbon, a hydrogen, and a carbon. Bromine has the highest atomic number and is hence group number one. Hydrogen is group number four, carbon and carbon tie. So I go out to break the tie. This carbon is bound to chlorine. This uh, carbon is bound to hydrogen. The chlorine is, obviously has a higher atomic number than the hydrogen, which means that this whole branch over here is considered prior to group number two with respect to this stereocenter, while this a methyl group over here is considered priority group number three. Going one to two to three, that looks clockwise. However, Group number four is pointing three-dimensionally towards us. If I were on the other side of this wall staring at it so that group four were pointing away from me, then going from one to two to three would indeed be counterclockwise. And our counterclockwise is S. So this stereocenter has an S configuration. Now I'm going to erase these numbers and we'll do the same thing for the stereocenter here to the right. Looking at this rightmost stereocenter, he's bound to a chlorine, a carbon, a carbon, and an oxygen. Chlorine has the highest atomic number, oxygen has the second highest atomic number, and carbon and carbon tie. Let's go out to break the tie. This carbon's bound to a bromine, this one's bound to hydrogens. The bromine one breaks the tie, which means that this entire branch to the left is considered priority group number three with respect to this stereocenter, while this methyl is considered priority group number four. In this case, thankfully, group number four is pointed three-dimensionally away from us, which means that I don't have to imagine what it would look like from any other angle other than the one that we're looking at it with. Going from one to two to three, that is counterclockwise, which means that this stereocenter is also S. So this is an SS molecule. Now we'll do the same approach for the stereocenters over here to the right. <clears throat> Let's look at this stereocenter, the rightmost one. Once again, the hydrogen is the lowest priority. The bromine is the highest priority. This branch here to the left is the second most priority, followed by this methyl, which is the third most priority. Group number four, in this case, is pointing three-dimensionally away from us, so I can trace from one to two to three. That's counterclockwise, which is an S stereocenter. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase each of these numbers and do the same thing for the stereocenter at the left. Leftmost stereocenter is bound to an oxygen, a chlorine, a carbon, and a carbon. Chlorine wins, followed by oxygen in second place. Carbon and carbon tie, so I go out to break the tie. Bromine, hydrogen, bromine wins, which means that this entire branch is considered uh, priority group number three with respect to this stereocenter. And the methyl is considered priority group number four. Going from one to two to three, it looks like it's clockwise. However, group number four is pointed three-dimensionally towards us. So I have to imagine what it would look like if I were on the opposite side of the wall, staring at it. Going from one to two to three would indeed be counterclockwise in that case, which means that this stereocenter is also S. So 
The molecule here at the left is SS, the molecule here at the right is SS, and they otherwise look exactly the same, which means they are the exact same molecule. Now, if you don't believe me, you can actually take this and imagine what it would look like if you flipped it upside down like a pancake. You can see that if you took this molecule, scooped your hand underneath it, flipped it upside down like a pancake and laid it on the board, indeed each of these individual groups would be pointing in the same three-dimensional direction as the corresponding groups on the molecule to the left. So these are indeed the same molecules, just drawn in slightly different ways. In this question, I ask you to determine if each of these individual pairs are enantiomers, diastereomers, or just the same molecule drawn in a slightly convoluted way. If any of you guys are interested in knowing, I'm going to go ahead and show you the answer to these questions right now. We now face a similar problem as before. For each of these pairs of molecules, we're asked to determine if they are enantiomers, diastereomers, or the exact same molecule just drawn in a slightly twisted way, one from the other. The way to do this, once again, is the same approach we did in the previous problem. <sighs> Identify the configuration for each stereocenter in the molecule to the left and compare it to the analogous stereocenter to the molecule on the right. If their exact opposites are to S at every single stereocenter, then, they're in, then they are enantiomers. If they are exactly the same R to R and S to S, then they're the same molecule. And if they're somewhere in between, then they're diastereomers. So we'll go ahead and do that by tackling this stereocenter right here. It's bound to an oxygen, a carbon, a carbon, a, and a carbon. Oxygen wins. I've got these three carbons. Let's see if I can break the tie. Carbon out here goes to a bromine. Carbon out here goes to oxygen. Carbon out here goes to hydrogen. Bromine's the winner, which means that this entire branch to the right is with respect to this stereocenter group number two, while this one down here bound to oxygen is group number three, and this methyl is the loser group number four. Fortunately for us, group number four is three-dimensionally pointing away from us in this case, so as I trace from one to two to three, it's clockwise, which means that it is R. So I'll go ahead and write down R right here. We now do the same thing for this stereocenter over here. I've got a bromine, a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. Bromine wins. I've, now I have to break the tie here. I've got a carbon bound to a nit hydrogen, Carbon's bound to a nitrogen and carbon over here stuck to an oxygen. And remember, I always go in the direction toward the uh, whatever atom the thing is stuck to that has the highest atomic number. So once again, the branch over here to the left is the winner. It is going to be with respect to this stereocenter group number two. This carbon is bound to a nitrogen. It's going to be group number three. And the methyl out here is going to be group number four. As with our previous case, group number four, our lowest priority group, is pointing three-dimensionally away from us. So as I go from one to two to three, that is counterclockwise, which is S. We'll now do the same thing for the molecule over here. Bromine's the winner. This branch over here to the right is uh, second place. This carbon bound to the nitrogen is third place, and this methyl is the loser. Tracing from one to two to three looks clockwise, and indeed it is, but because the methyl is pointing three-dimensionally towards us, I have to imagine what it would look like if I were on the opposite side of the board, which would be counterclockwise, which means that this stereocenter is S. Looking at our second stereocenter, I've got an oxygen, carbon, carbon, and carbon. Oxygen wins. The carbon over here that's bound to a bromine is going to be the second place. Over here, the methyl is the loser, and this carbon bound to an oxygen is uh, place number three. The loser is, of course, pointing three-dimensionally away from us in this case, which means that I can just look at it as is. Going from one to two to three is counterclockwise, which means that this stereocenter is S. You'll notice that this molecule over here, with the exception of the three-dimensional directions in which each of these groups is pointing, is exactly the same as the molecule over here. This molecule over here has an R configuration here, and the analogous stereocenter at this position has an S. This inner stereocenter over here, bound to the bromine, has an S, and this one has an S. Are they exact opposites? No, they're not. Are they exactly the same? No, they're not. Which means that these two molecules are not enantiomers, and they're not the same molecule. They are, relative to each other, diastereomers. I will go ahead and abbreviate that by saying diasts. Let's do the same thing for these molecules down here. I've got this stereocenter right here. It's bound to an oxygen, carbon, carbon, carbon. Oxygen wins. The carbons all tie, so now go out. So I now go out to see if I can break the tie. This carbon is bound to fluorine, this carbon is bound to three carbons, and this carbon is bound to a hydrogen. The fluorine wins, which means that this entire branch over here is considered priority group number two with respect to this stereocenter. This carbon is just stuck to hydrogens, he's the loser. And this T butyl group over here is considered place number three. Losers pointing away from us, I can just trace the circle from one to two to three is counterclockwise, which means that that is an S stereocenter.
Now we'll look at this stereocenter right here. I've got a fluorine, oxygen, carbon, carbon. Fluorine has the highest atomic number, which means he's priority group number one. Oxygen is second place. Carbon bound to hydrogen. Over here, I've got a carbon bound to an oxygen. This entire branch over here to the left is place number three, while the one over here is place number four. Place number four in this case is once again pointing three-dimensionally away from us, which means that I can just trace from one to two to three. That is clockwise, which means that it has an R configuration. Okay, let's do the same thing for this molecule over here. This leftmost stereocenter is bound to an oxygen, fluorine, carbon, carbon. Fluorine's the highest atomic number. He wins. Oxygen takes second place. This carbon's bound to an oxygen, this one to hydrogens, which means that this group over here is considered uh, number three, and the methyl group is number four. Methyl group's the loser, pointing three-dimensionally away from us. I can just trace from one to two to three. That is clockwise, which means that it is an R stereocenter. Now we'll do the same thing for this stereocenter over here. He's stuck to a carbon, 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 and an oxygen. The oxygen has the highest atomic number. It'll be number one. I've got a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. This carbon here is bound to a fluorine, which is a higher atomic number than this carbon over here, which is stuck to three carbons. So this entire branch to the left is considered priority group number two with respect to this stereocenter. This terp-butyl group is considered priority group number three, while this methyl coming towards us is priority group number four. I trace from one to two to three, which of course looks counterclockwise, but the loser's coming towards me. If I were on the opposite side of the wall staring at it so that the methyl group were pointing three-dimensionally away from me, that would indeed be clockwise, which means that this stereocenter is also R. So molecule to the left is an SR, molecule to the right is an RR. Are they exact opposites? No. Are they exactly the same? No. So what are they relative to each other? They are also diastereomers, which I will abbreviate by saying diasts.